design and synthesis of hydrogenated titanium dioxide polyaniline core shell nanorods for flexible, high-performance supercapacitors. That's who you think I am. In 2013, I designed and developed a supercapacitor nanomaterial device. For those of you who don't know, a supercapacitor is an energy storage device, which is kind of like a battery, which can hold a lot of energy, and also like a capacitor, which can charge very quickly. Because of my nanomaterial combination, my supercapacitor had much more improved performance and has the potential to replace conventional batteries and electronics. For this project, I was awarded as a Grand Prize Young Scientist Award winner at the 2013 Intel International Science and Engineering Fair and was later named to the Forbes 30 Under 30 in Energy list. <laughs> Thank you. It didn't hit me I had won this competition. It didn't hit me that I had won the grand prize at this fair of 1,600 projects. I couldn't believe it was happening. I couldn't believe it was happening. It didn't hit me until finally the confetti started falling from the sky and I felt it in my hand and I knew this was real. This was it. This had been my first Intel International Science Fair and my last one. I was so swept away into the moment of it, I didn't even have time to call my mom and tell her I'd won. I'm pretty sure she Googled me and somehow found out I'd won this science competition. Reporters stormed the stage asking, how does it feel? Are you happy? People started pointing at me and being, remember that face. Remember that woman in science. I became this person, this public figure who represented youth and in innovation and technology. I became this person who could show that science was fun, cool, innovative, and I reveled in every moment of it. From tomorrow, that day would have been two years ago. Now I'm a rising junior at Harvard University, and people still ask me what they think is a very natural question. So how's your project going? And my answer, I'm not working on it, for now. You can imagine the response that I get. People are shocked, standing there open mouths, catching flies. But she was gonna kill it in energy. But she won the science fair. But her path was so easy and set forward. But where's my own quick charger that I can charge a cell phone with in a few seconds? But no, no buts. Why? Because I am a dancer. And the journey of dance is that the show must go on. Being a dancer has enabled me to take on multiple identities from my supercapacitor research, to my current work in biomaterials and tissue engineering, to my education policy work at the State House. I am multiple people all in one. I have always been and will always be a dancer. I'm pretty sure that the first move I could make before I could walk was a knee jerk, which vertically looks like, hey yo. That was my first move, that is who I am. Dance allowed me to be true to myself. As a dancer, going through multiple productions, plays, dramas, I became so many different characters in so many roles I couldn't even imagine. As a dancer, I could take someone's emotion and spit it back out at them. As a dancer, I could be a driver. I could be someone interested and curious about science. For me, my mind is dancing. So let me tell you the three ways I make my mind dance. The first is to be a character. When I was in high school, when I was a freshman, I didn't really know what science fair was. One day, we were all called into a big auditorium, kind of like this. We didn't know what was going on, but inside there were these big blue and white balloons and a packed audience. And at the very front of the stage were these two adults who we had never seen before. They were standing there with a microphone, and they were here to announce the winners of the Intel Science Talent Search, which is a competition for seniors in high school who have done a substantial research project. I was so amazed. They kept saying, show me the money, and brought out these giant checks, $1,000 checks for these winners. And one after the other, six winners walked up to that stage. They had done the coolest projects ever. One of them had invented an algorithm to identify hidden oil pipelines in disaster zones. And another had worked on investigating green algae as a source of biofuel. And all of this, they were three years older than me, only three years older than me. This is a picture of the award ceremony. 
I was very happy for them. Our school had done amazing that year. But what is missing from this picture? Oh, you guys are really good. OK, good. The six, the six winners were six boys. And that girl in the middle was our science teacher. <laughs> there was no winner who was a girl. And it was that moment that I decided I wanted to be up on that stage. I wanted to be that girl. I wanted to be that character, assume the character. In this role, I never thought I could film. And for the next three years, I set out towards that journey. I began my journey talking to as many people as I could to figure out how to get involved in science and technology. I was one of those kids who emailed so many professors asking for a position to work in their lab. I tried my hand in biochemistry and then settled on nanoengineering, which I would always joke is the coolest type of engineering because we work with things we can't even see. So I became this nanoengineer and I got the last piece of my puzzle. I found a problem that I really cared about. After having the battery of my cell phone die on me, as I'm sure it has for many of you, I became really frustrated and I wanted to do something about it. I started researching batteries, energy storage, and finally came across all the work being done in the field. Batteries are so important, they exist in every facet of our lives, from the slow charging times of our cell phones and laptops to the amount of energy needed to power an electric car. Batteries were everywhere, they were everything. I began to read paper after paper, pour through magazine after magazine, building these concept maps, design maps, and finally, I got my own idea. I knew what I wanted to test in lab. And I went there and I did just that. I mixed the chemicals, I made the nanorods, and I tested what I'd finally made, and I had produced a supercapacitor which could power an LED device after being charged for a very short amount of time. And three years later, I was that girl on stage. I was that girl who had won this international science fair, her first international science fair. I was this girl who I hoped could inspire others, who I hoped could show others that if you assume a character you think you can never fill, you can always get there. You can always get there. And then I realized that this is exactly what dance had taught me to do all along. As a dancer, I was the mischievous Krishna stealing butter. I was the lover looking out for her lover's soul in the audience. I was that girl on stage. I was a 17-year-old doing supercapacitor research. And then I thought back to all of the people that had helped me in the journey. I thought back to each and every one of them. And that's how I got to the second way I made my mind dance, and that is to marinate in the emotion. At the International Science Fair, I met this group of Tunisian competitors who had been working on this project to develop affordable stovetops because the big problem in their society was these stoves that caught on fire during natural disaster. But as I spoke to them in slow and broken English, I realized that there was something more behind the project than just the facts and figures they were explaining. I began to make out the fear and bravery marbled in their eyes. They had worked on this project amidst the Tunisian Revolution, amidst the Arab Spring. And I could just picture it. I could picture the feeling of being trapped, of not knowing what was going on, of having to do science without knowing what the next day would look like, of walking through the streets, empty hollow houses all around me, one step at a time, going forward towards this science that I really cared about. I felt it. I felt everything. And I realized that science was not enough. There were so many factors that prevented their research from being translated. But there were even more factors that prevented them from doing their research in the first place. Science alone was not enough. And that's how I got to the third way I make my mind dance. And that is to find your move and be tempted. It was so easy for me to continue on this path of energy. It was so easy for me to do what I've always done, to be in science, to be in tech. I grew up in the Silicon Valley. I grew up around this fast product market, around all of this technology. It was so easy. But thinking back to those Tunisian students, thinking back to my own supercapacitor research, I realized that there was so much more that needed to be done. There is so much innovative research that happens around the world today, and yet 
The world stands the way it always was. There had to be something I could do to make the effects of science much more wider reaching. And in the process, my home split from the sterile laboratory benches to the Harvard Kennedy School of Government's Institute of Politics, where I began to learn about the inner workings of the government. I had the opportunity to listen to amazing speakers, to work on education policy in the state of Massachusetts, and now I lead my own leadership training program for young women. I remember asking the Prime Minister of Norway a question about his policy on oil and sustenance as an economic means, coupled with how he views environmental change for future generations. And his answer to this question, that was a million dollar question. And you know what? He was right. Within this one problem, there are so many ways to approach the solution. There are so many ways to think about how we approach energy, whether it be through science, through policy, through public service. And then I learned that in order for me to really shake up the industry like never before, in order for me to really do something groundbreaking, I needed to develop myself as a whole person to collect these experiences I didn't have before. And I set out to do exactly that. To me, the process of exploration has been so crucial in my development, and dance has allowed me to be comfortable with it. At the heart, I'm a dancer. At the core, I'm a scientist. And now I'm beginning to be a citizen of the world. And voila, that's my move. My move is to be holistic, to be a whole person, to really feel what's going on. And being a dancer has enabled me to do just that, to be comfortable with just that. Dancing across the field, my eyes catch on fire. They live in the moment. They transcend the moment. They go do something bigger. Because as a dancer, I can be a scientist. I can be a policymaker. I can be someone interested in public service. I can be all of these things because I am a dancer. Dance is so important to who I am and to how I function. My mind is dancing and will never stop. Dance is a movement of the limbs, the body, the soul, and the mind. I want to end with this one quote from the ancient Indian scripture of dance. That is, where the hand goes, the eyes follow. Where the eyes go, the mind follows. And where the mind goes, the soul is born. Thank you.